This Tech Channel video is brought to you by our Tech Channel partner, JLC PCB. JLC PCB is a perfect solution to make your PCB board ideas a reality. Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test Tech. I'm Josh. Today we're going to be showing you how to build the FT Easy Hornet. Now, the FT Easy Hornet is part of our FT Easy Jet Series, and this is a fantastic flyer whether you're flying as a free flight chuck glider or if you're partnering with our two channel Easy Power Pack. In this build video, we're going to show you how to build the FT Easy Hornet. We're also going to show you how to check weight and balance, and you're also going to learn a lot about the great design around the F 18 Hornet and why it flies so well, mainly its wing design and its two vertical stabilizers. Let's go ahead and first identify all the parts that we're going to need for FT Easy Hornet, and then we'll get started. First, we have our two vertical fins. We have our main body. We have our main vertical fuselage. And then we have the front nose doublers of our fuselage. As we build this, you're going to notice that I am removing the paper. Removing the paper on this is going to save us a lot of weight. And also, we have plenty of rigidity in a small size it's already at. This is going to make the plane fly and glide even better. Now for this build, we're going to be using our FT-300 hot glue gun. Now this is a 300 watt hot glue gun and can get incredibly hot, but the reason I really love this for easy projects is we have a temperature control down here at the bottom. When we're working with these easy planes and we're working on raw foam, it's a really good idea to take it one notch from the medium setting. This is going to give us a cooler setting, it won't melt the foam, and it also won't burn your hands as easy. Before we peel the paper, let's go ahead and get the main body here glued together. In our speed build kit, you're going to notice that there's a couple score cuts to make everything fit in a small package. Our first step is we're going to go ahead and glue our center line shut here. All we simply need to do is open this up and take our hot glue gun and put a nice thin bead of glue on the three portions that you see here. It's always nice to have a scrap piece of foam ready just to spear that out. Notice I haven't removed any paper yet because that way now when I remove the paper, it's going to be a nice clean joint. Now that our main seam is dry, we're going to go ahead and carefully peel the paper. Don't worry if your paper comes off in a couple pieces, that's absolutely fine. And we're also going to carefully peel the paper on the back side now. There you are. Now before we move this, you're going to notice that the back vertical stabilizer here has a score cut that is almost completely through it. To keep this intact, we're going to go ahead and take a thin piece of tape. and place it right over that hinge. Now that our main wing section is all complete, we're gonna go ahead and remove the paper from all the foam pieces that we have left. Let's go ahead and do that right now. Now that we have all the paper peeled off, let's go ahead and start our assembly of the main center fuselage. So our main center fuselage is gonna have a little nose piece that you see right here. We're just gonna go ahead and do a quick practice test fit. And then once we're happy with that, just a little thin bead of glue on both sides. Our next step is to install our doublers. Now both of our doublers are identical to each other. So all we need to do is pick one side and then line it up. The way we're gonna line this up is by lining up the outer surfaces of the nose and then along with the bottom and also the very top. Keep in mind that this area here that's gonna expose the canopy is just for decoration, but you don't wanna try to move things back and forth. Simply concentrate on the bottom layer, top nose piece, and the back of the fuselage. Once you're happy with the way everything fits, we're gonna rotate this over 180 degrees and we're gonna put a nice thin bead of glue. Don't need to put too much right along all of our pieces. Take it right down to the table. I'm just gonna line up my pieces, taking my time, and we're just gonna hold this down for about 30 seconds. Same process now on the other side. Always do a test fit. This is gonna help us not only make sure that we're looking at the right spots to line everything up and that our piece fits correctly, but it also helps tell us what side we wanna put our glue on. And we're gonna put a nice thin bead of glue right along all of our pieces. Notice that whenever I'm gluing my pieces down, whenever possible, I try to use a table as my friend to keep things flat and straight. And we're just gonna hold this down for about 30 seconds. All right, so for our next step, now that we have our fuselage doubler done, we're gonna go ahead and do a practice test fit. A couple of things I wanna point out about this fuselage is you're gonna notice after the last wing joint here, that this actually angles up. This is gonna give us the proper amount of deflection we need for our tail to make sure it glides well and flies well. So make sure that you don't straighten that out or keep it straightened. It's also the other reason why this tail piece here is made to flex a little bit. So we're just gonna give this a little bit of a pre-flex latin to kinda of establish that angle so it doesn't fight it. Once we have that established, we're ready to install this. Now we're going to take our time and we're going to slightly open this up. And 
not that these push back through. We're also going to need to gently open up the sides of the body. Just a little bit more. There we go. You can now see that all the pieces here are just going to move and then lock into place. And if you look now as I hold this in place, you're gonna notice that there's a proper amount of deflection that we need on the tail, just like we worked on before. We also, before we glue this in place, we wanna confirm that the spot for our control board is facing to the left. Anytime we look at the left or the right, it's always gonna be as if we're in the cockpit of the airplane ourselves. So we want the tail towards us and the nose point in the direction of flight away from us. At this point, we see that this gap is on our left side. That's perfect. We're ready to go ahead and take some glue and we're just gonna go ahead and mark it with glue in different parts of the fuselage. There's no reason to go back through the whole entire and put a heavy bead of glue on all four sides. So I'm gonna first start at the nose. I'm gonna hold this in and I'm just gonna put a little bead of glue here. Then I'll come back with my scrap and scrape off the excess. And I'll do it on the other side. A little bead of glue. Scrape off the excess. Make sure at any time before we put the glue down, make sure that you have the fit right and everything looks good. We're ready to go ahead and take some glue and we're just gonna go ahead and mark it with glue in different parts of the fuselage. There's no reason to go back through the whole entire and put a heavy bead of glue on all four sides. All right, now that we have all of our pieces, the only pieces left that we have is our vertical stabilizers. Now we're gonna be using our jig here to make sure we get the proper angle. This jig is gonna be located within your kit. All you simply need to do is punch it out. Test the placement. We're first gonna go ahead and line this up and then move this over to make sure it lines up properly. You can always use the edge of the table or a piece of sandpaper to lightly crush down to give yourself more glue surface and make the end stronger. There we go. And the same process on the other side. Quick test fit. Take down the table and just do a very, very light crush. Make sure whenever you hold this against your, uh, your gauge here, that you don't have to fight it. There we go. At this point, our airframe for the FT Easy Hornet is now complete. The really cool thing about this is, is if you built this along with me and you didn't get a little too excessive on the glue on the backside, you don't need any center of gravity adjustment. You should be able to glide this just as it is because the doublers on the nose give you the exact nose weight. This is probably one of the best chuck gliders we have in our Easy line. Now at this point, let's go out and take it out, trim it, and I'll show you how to adjust it if need be. All right, for the center of gravity, the center of gravity is pretty much right at the point where these doublers end here. So if you hold this up, you're gonna notice it's pretty much balanced, just slightly behind, and that's fine. That means it's slightly nose heavy. Let's go ahead and toss with our friend Haley here and see how she glides. So anytime you throw these, what you wanna do is you wanna aim at the point and then throw it like a dart, not like a football. So what we're gonna do here is just give a little bit of up trim. And by doing that, all we have to do is just slightly curl the foam on the backside just a touch. It's a great letter, isn't it? Yeah, it just floats. Perfect. All right, at this point, everything glides good. It's all adjusted. We're gonna go back on the workshop and we're gonna show you how you can put your FT Easy two channel power back on to make this fully radio control. Now that the FT Easy Hornet airframe is all done, we're gonna go ahead and show you how to install our FT Easy two channel power pack. So let's go ahead and put this aside. We'll show you everything that's inside here. So what you see here is everything that you have inside of our FT Easy two channel power pack. You have your main transmitter, the control board that goes in the airplane. This is gonna give us our stabilization and also control the motors. We have our battery, our battery charger, our left and right motor, and we also include an extra set of props and a prop removal tool. This tool is really important if you wanna remove your props and not damage your motor. 
First thing we want to do is we want to put the battery on charge because this goes together so quickly that we don't want to have to wait on the battery charge. We want you to be able to go out and fly. To properly charge our batteries, the first thing we want to do is we want to plug our USB charger into the port. Once our charger is plugged in, we're then going to connect our battery. Once we connect our battery, you'll notice that the red LED light on the charger goes on. When that charger finally goes off, that means that the battery is fully charged and you're ready to fly. Make sure you always unplug and replug in your charger between every charge to make sure that the little charge board has been reset. So our first step that we're going to do is put our attention towards our control board. Our control board is what's going to control the motors. It's going to take the receiving signal from our transmitter and it's also going to be what our battery is connected to. Now it's very important with this control board to make sure that we mount this up properly or else our gyros are going to be backwards. To make sure this is mounted properly, our battery connector is always going to be pointing towards the nose and our motor connectors are going to be pointing towards the left wing tip. So let's go ahead and carefully remove this. We're just simply going to lift up by pulling off the tang. You can save this if you want. We're not going to need it for this build. And favoring towards the left side of the wing, we're carefully going to just go ahead and move this up and line it up directly over the hole for our extra motor, just like you see here. We'll come back later with some glue or some tape once we make sure everything is attached the way we like it. Our next step is to identify the left and right wing. I'm going to go ahead and turn this to the perspective of the camera just so you guys can see exactly how I want you to do this. Our left wing tip is going to be on the left side as if you're in the cockpit facing out. This is your left. So we're going to take our left motor, place it right here, and then we have our right motor that we're going to place right here. I'm going to go ahead and just take my right motor, I'm going to put it in place, and with this piece of tape on each side, I'm going to tape my motor down. This comes in very handy if you want to swap your electronics from one plane to another. There's one. And again, we have our left motor. Same process for our left motor here. There's one. And here's two. Putting our attention towards the right motor. Carefully going to wiggle this through both the fuselage and the control board. With our right motor lead passed through, we're going to line it up to the white connector. And we're also going to make sure that the pins line up properly as well. If you feel like you have to force it, make sure you double and triple check that your pins are lined up directly with the connector. Same process now on the other side, this time it's red. Again, we're going to take a look at this. We'll line these pins up and press it into place. We can now take a piece of tape if we want, and we can dress up our motor leads. There's one. And there's two. Board, once we're happy with the placement of our control board, what I like to do is to simply kind of rock this open, and I'm just gonna put a small little drop of glue just by the pins that you see here. I want to make sure that this can easily be removed when we go from one airplane to the other. All of our electronics now are hooked up onto the airframe. Our next step is to install the battery and also install the batteries on our transmitter and bind this. Now for this model, your center of gravity is established by your position of your battery. Now basically when we got the glider earlier, we established where the best glide was and where the center of gravity is. This is a great indicator for where you want to start with, with your plane being now radio controlled. You can adjust this forward and backwards though to adjust the flight characteristics on how you want it to fly best. Now for the best glide slope on this model specifically, it was about a quarter inch behind the doublers of the fuselage. So I'm going to go ahead and place my battery. Push it right through the doublers like you see here. And I'm going to position this until my center of gravity is right where I liked it before. Again, we may need to move this backwards or forwards a little bit, but this is a great starting point. Now that we're happy with the center of gravity, our next step is to plug in our battery. And if your controller is not already turned on, all we simply need to do is turn this on. With our plane turned on, we're going to turn on our controller. You're going to notice it's going to go to a slower flashing. When we go all the way to full throttle, and then all the way to close throttle, you're going to see both lights on the airplane and on the transmitter go solid. At this point, if I take my controller and I give it throttle, when I put rotate to the left, the left motor should speed up 
And when I rotate to the right, the right motor should speed up. And also when I give controls to the left or right, you should hear the left and right motor speed up. So when I give controls to the left with the motors running, the right motor will speed up. And when I give it to the right, the left motor will speed up. Keep in mind that the gyros are serving the purpose to keep the plane tracking straight. The controller is serving the purpose to steer you left and right. At this point, we're ready to go out and fly it. The only recommendation I do have is unless you're flying in a very wide open area, go ahead and press your rates button one time to make it flash like you see here. This is gonna give you higher rates and more maneuverability. Let's go out and fly. All right, friends, we're all set to take this up for its maiden flight here. A couple things to also refocus on here. Center of gravity is everything. And also, once you put the electronics on, you may find that you have to adjust it slightly different from when you had it when it was a glider. Specifically for the F-18, what you may notice, you may have to curl up the back elevators a little bit more to get the proper uh, flight characteristics. And also, the center of gravity may need to shift forward a little bit more. Uh, let's go ahead and put this up in the air. Uh, one thing I strongly recommend, once you bind this, Press your rates button one time. Make sure that little light's flashing. That's gonna give you high rates. If you're in a wide open area, you can always try low rates, but high rates seem to work the best for these. The wind's coming here from my left to my right. We're gonna to toss it in the wind, see how she does. There it is. <laughs> she flies fantastic. Let's go ahead and do a turn to the right. Anytime you wanna go up, you simply give it more throttle. Anytime you wanna go down, you give it less throttle. Now with these planes, you never really want to go totally close throttle or else it'll give you a lot more power when you go to turn it. Make sure you go ahead and cut your throttle just before landing, but other than that, carry at least 10% throttle even on a descent. Let's go ahead and put her in for a landing here. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> Friends, I want to thank you for being part of the Flight Test family. Thank you so much for taking the time to build the FT Easy 3 Jets with me. Also, we really want to see what you design and create from learning what you've learned from the Easy Jet series. Make sure you share that with us. We'll see you next time.